Well, here we are again. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was really impressed with that morning class. Oh, me too. It was really interesting to see how much mm -hmm. of the understanding of the spirit realm was found in just that little short piece of of uh, uh, the uh, Matthew chapter, chapter five. Chapter five, yeah. So, yeah. In fact, that whole section all goes all the way up through the end of chapter seven. Uh huh. Five, six, and seven. Right. Are all talking about the spirit realm seminar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to end up with a, a nice new little um, commercial out of it, so people can see more about what the spirit realm's about. Amen. Hallelujah. So we welcome you here in our hum humble abode yeah. that Yahweh has given us, <laughs> and so. Uh, we are we have been counting the Omer uh, since the um, the Shabbat that fell in between the Feast of Matzah, which occurs just after Passover, the beginning of Passover, and so we are in the midst of that, as commanded by Yahweh. And today is the thirty fifth, thirty fifth day of counting the Omer. moving fast it sure yeah. is <laughs> this is the fifth sabbath yes the fifth shabbat that's fallen since the uh first weekly sabbath that fell within the week of, of oh, matzah. matzah yep and so we're going to honor yahweh by saying this blessing unto him No wonder it seemed like it's going so what? fast. <laughs> <laughs> Let me verify it real quick. If you saw what this lady does during the week, getting things all fixed and running through the the liturgy and trying to make sure that's all right and going through our our plans for sh the um, Shavuot, it is the 28th day. I stand corrected. Uh. <laughs> I had it right in the handout, but I guess I forgot that I had already made the correction, updated on the uh, on the little PowerPoint we had in the production machine. <laughs> so I got myself a little mixed up there. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we only learn by our mistakes. That's right. <laughs> You never learn on something you do right the first time. Right. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> oh, uh. thank you. <laughs> Let's say the blessing as one. All right. Thank you, Father. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ashir Kitshanu B'Mitzotah V'Tivanu Al Sefirat HaOmer Blessed are you, O Lord, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by commandments, commandments concerning the counting of the Omer. Amen. Hallelujah. And we will have a holy assembly this coming month on the 9th. Get me back on cam, please. Yeah, well, you can also remove that top part and show us on that area. Okay. So, um... We're going to have uh, the Feast of Shavuot occurring on the 9th of next month and uh, have our Holy Assembly at 11 a.m. Please join us before Yahweh in rejoicing for giving us the Torah and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. We're going to have a meat luncheon. Amen. Amen. You know, I've, I was thinking about it. Some people complain because you have to count so many days. You know, to get yeah. to Shavuot. Uh-huh. And why did he have to do it that way? Why didn't he do like the rest of the Holy Days and just give us a date? Hmm. Well. Well, because even a kindergartner can count past ten. <laughs> we yes. need to we need to at least uh exceed, you know, fifth, sixth grade students in our understanding of god either mm -hmm. that or we need to reach a little harder <laughs> oh, you, you know what i think 
What? I think it's because it kind of gets us started for the expecting of the other holy days, too. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of gets us in tune with his uh, ordinance in, in holy days. So Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's all fun. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you what. One of my kids just told me, he said, you know, you know what I hate about the Bible? What? There's no end to learning new things. I mean, it's like this. Everything is just always new, and and I get tired of it, you know. <laughs> I said, well, that's what I like the most about it. Yep. It's always new and exciting to me as I study. <laughs> yes. And so anyway, yeah. If you're looking for an easy slicker slider way to scoot down into the muddy pit, you can find it, but it's not going to get you anything but muddy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Well, hallelujah. Oh, remember, tonight begins Shani Pesach. The second Pesach sh- Shani. S- Pesach Shani. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so if, if you were... um unclean or unable to at- attend because of a, an emergency travel of some sort, like if in the military, for example. Um, tonight's tonight to have the Passover before the Lord. Cool. Yeah. And also to announce uh, the day of Yerushalayim is approaching as well. It's not a commanded feast. It's just something that is in uh, celebrating the miraculous Miracle that uh, God has uh, restored Yerushalayim to our people uh, after the Six Day War, and so uh, what a blessing it was because they didn't they didn't think it was going to last uh, only they think it was it was going to last longer than it did, and it was just on the day of Yom Kippur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, it was so it was it was awesome. Well, you know how to say the New Jerusalem in Hebrew? Can't think of it right now. Yerushalayim. Uh, Yerushalayim Chadasha. The new. Yep. Amen. You know, the Brich Chadasha means the, the uh, right. covenant new. Right. Okay. So Chadash, uh, covenant would be Torah. Uh-huh. That's feminine. Uh-huh. Chadasha is uh-huh. feminine also. Yeah. Cool. Well, yes, that's deep. It is deep. You want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a ladder, please. <laughs> <laughs> Step on into the water, water, <laughs> wait out a little bit deeper. <laughs> Come on, children, singing praises to the Lamb of God, to the Lamb of God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Okay. All right. That's all the announcements I have. Hmm? That's all the announcements I have. That's all the news you got? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) For now. (laughs) You ready to sound the show part? Oh, yes. I guess so. Okay. Dorim Kalashim. Who said it again? New s- new matters. New, new matters. Others, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just like to think in Hebrew as much as I can get my mind to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Keep it trained. Cool tof. All right. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ashir ki chanu b'mitzvah tah v'tivan eshemoa kol ha'shaporot. Blessed are you, O Lord, Lord our God, God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments, commandments and, and command us to hear the, the sound, sound of the shofar. Amen. Oh, Lord. 
Well, I got my lip to run in the wrong direction again. That's all right. We understand that every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on a, I'm on to hit you with my clobber slobber. <laughs> Talk about my trumpet playing that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at, right? <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, it's time to worship. Remember what that scripture said that we read this morning. Yes. As you judge others, you will be judged. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> You pick on me a lot, too, though. I know. <laughs> That's because we will beat each other. Yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, let's worship Yahweh. Amen. The one who's created us. The one we have chosen because he had chosen us first. And so uh, let's walk in the light. Oh, wow. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. Come house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. Come house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. Come house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. The holy man is humble, the lofty one brought low. For the Lord alone will be exalted in that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Yeshua is the Lord unto the glory of God. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light. Come house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. The pride of man is humble, arrogance abased. For the Lord alone will be exalted in that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Yeshua is the Lord unto the Glory of God. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. We're going to walk. Yeah, we are. Walk in the light of the Lord. We're gonna walk in the light of the Lord. Come on, walk in the light of the Lord. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem. I was glad when, when they, they said to me, Come, Come to, to the, the house, house of the Lord. Lord. 
standing here in your gates again. again. Up to Jerusalem, oh, I was glad when they said to me, come to the house of the Lord. Standing here in your gates again, up to Jerusalem, up to Jerusalem, up to Jerusalem. Sons of Zion rejoice in the King. Let them praise His name with dancing. Let them sing praises to Him with timbrel and the lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people, and He will bless the humble with Yeshua. Praise the Lord! Sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Oh, praise the Lord! Sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Let the saints rejoice in His glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and the two-edged sword in their hand. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people and He will bless the humble with Yeshua. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Oh, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Sons of Zion, rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing. Let them 
sing praises to Him. For Timberland the liar, for the Lord takes pleasure in His people, and He will bless the humble with Yeshua. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Oh, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Come praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. Oh, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song in the congregation of the righteous. In the congregation of the righteous. Lord of hosts is your name. Oh, heavenly 
think it's time to go ahead and to our liturgical service. Amen. Yep. Let's go into our liturgical service with worship, more worship. Hebrew style. In Hebrew style, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh. Your talit's in the bag. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up Matovu, please. Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Israel, Vaani Marov Chashtecha, Avo Betecha, Estachave Elekol, Elekol Kashtecha, Let us face east towards Jerusalem for the Shema, please. Baruch Adonai Hamavarach. Baruch Adonai Hamavarach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamavarach Le'olam Va'ed. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'olam Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name. His kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hayom alevavecha, vishinata alevanecha, vidivartavam, vishiftecha vivetecha, vileftecha avaderech, vishakha ukomecha, vishamta leol al yadecha, vihayula tafod bein enecha, uktaktam, al mimezot betecha, uvish arecha. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, speaking to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall, s and you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. Amen. Amen. Mika Mihi kamocha ve'elim Adonai, Mihi kamocha nedar v'kodesh, Norat ilot o'osefele, Norat ilot o'osefele. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorified in holiness? You are awesome in praise, 
The working wonders, O oh Lord, who is like you, O oh Lord? Mika mocha ve'elim anonai, Mika mocha nedar bakodesh, Nora tehilot. Oh, Sefele, oh, Sefele. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the menu, please. Reader's Kaddish. Yit kadav, yit kadashem e'rabah. Amen. Yermad evrach erotei. Beyam lech malchote, bechayev hun of yo mechon uchaye de kabe Israel. Bagala, bagala, uvisman kariv, vimaro, amen. Yeshem erabama bevorach, leolam alabe alma yait barach. Yit barak, we is tabak, we pa arri o my mina say. We it had a vita lay, we it hala. She made a kodasha. Break her. The lami car begatava shirata. Tush behatava nehemata da amira biama. We maro. Amen. Oh, say shalom iramab. Israel, <laughs> Yahase shalom, Yahase shalom, shalom aleinu v'yoko Yisrael. Yahase shalom, Yahase shalom, shalom aleinu v'yoko Yisrael. V'imaro, amen. Magnified and sanctified with the name of God throughout the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during the days of your life and during the life of all the house of Israel. Speedily, yasun, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised and glorified and exalted and extolled and honored and magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he whose glory transcends. Yes, it is beyond all blessings and hymns and praises and consolations that make an offer unto him and say, Amen. Amen. May he who establish peace in the heavens Grant peace to us and to all of Israel and say Amen. Amen. Okay. <sighs> it's time. It is time. Okay, let's do the Torah service. Uh, all the way to the Aliyah, please. Yamad David ben Abraham la Torah. Amen. Amen. Come forth, David, son of Abraham, to the Torah. Baruch er Adonai Hamvarak. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak le'olam va'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak le'olam va'ed. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ashir b'karbanu mikol ha'amim, v'natan l'anu v'etorato, baruch atah Adonai noten ha'torah. Amen, amen. Oh my, you may be seated. Today's reading, it comes from the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 1, called Imur. Uh, 
Vayomer Yahweh el Moshe da imor el hakohanim b'nei Aharon vayomarta elahem la nefesh lo yitama b'ahamav. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, the sons say unto them. For the dead, none of you shall be defiled among his people. So this week's Torah Parsha is dealing with special instructions to the Kohanim because they have a, such a special role to play in Israel. And because of that, uh, God doesn't want them to become defiled so that they will always be ready to step forward to do their jobs in Israel. But for his him that is near, is near kin. Uh, let me just get this opened up there. For his relatives that are close to him, close his mother, his father, his son, daughter, brother, he may also make himself self unclean for his virgin sister who has never married, and is therefore dependent upon him. He may not make himself unclean because he is a leader among his people. Doing so would profane him. Kohanim are not to be making bald spots on their heads, mar the edges of their beards, or cut gashes in their flesh. Rather, they are to be holy for their God and not profane the name of their God, for they are the ones who present Yahweh with offerings made by fire, the bread of their God. Therefore, they must be holy. Now, the reason why this instruction is given to them is because that's the kinds of things that the priests of the land before Israel moved in uh, were doing, and they were regarded as holy. You know, this, have you seen the modern priests that have the circle cut in the top of their head for where they cut their hair, razor it, it's sharp? Oh, and yes. I've even seen it in the mid, mid, um, Renaissance movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's still done today, too. Really? Uh huh. And the priests in those religions are the priests that God did not want um, Israel following after. And so you have too much regard for the person who has razored his hair into a, a sunspot, I guess you could say, <laughs> on the back of his head. And so god just doesn't like that because that's what the people were doing in the land that he ran them off for he, he ran them out of the land because they were practicing pagan faith yeah. does that include the ones that have that braid they're shaved and they just have that little braid there yeah there are those too mm -hmm. <coughs> but god just tells them do not make don't mar the corners of your beard and don't shave your beard off and different instructions. He said, I want you to be holy because I am holy. <coughs> Verse 7. A Cohen is not to marry a woman who is a prostitute, who has been profaned or has been divorced because he is holy for his for his God, yeah, he is holy for, for his God. The priest is holy for his God. Yeah, there we go. Trying to get my brain to wrap around this. In verse 8, rather you are to set him apart as holy because he offers the bread of your God. He is to be holy for you because I, Yahweh, who make you holy, am holy. The daughter of the Kohen who profanes herself by prostitution profanes her father. She is to be put to death by fire. The Cohen who is ranked highest among his brothers, the one or whose head on whose head the anointing oil was poured, who is consecrated to put on the garments, is not to stop grooming his hair, tear his clothes, go in where any dead body is, or to make himself unclean even when it's his father even when his father or mother dies. He may not leave the sanctuary then or profane the sanctuary of his God because the consecration of the anointing oil 
of his God is upon him. I am Yahweh. I am not Dagon. I am not Diana. I am not uh, whatever the name of your particular favorite might be. He is Yahweh. And he doesn't want to be treated like these other gods are treated. Our priests are to marry a virgin. He may not marry a widow or a divorced, profane woman or prostitute. He must marry a virgin from among his own people and not disqualify his descendants among his people because I am Yahweh who makes him holy. Yahweh said to Moshe, tell Aaron, none of your descendants who is has a defect um, may approach to offer the bread of his God. No one with a defect may approach. No one blind, lame, with multi mutilated face or limb too long or broken foot or broken arm, a hunchback, stunted growth or cataract in his eyes, festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No one descended from Aaron, the Cohen, who has such a defect may approach approach to present the offerings for Yahweh made by fire. He, is a, he has a defect and is not approached to offer the bread of his God. He may eat the bread of his God, both the especially holy and, and the holy. Only he is not to go into the carton or approach the altar because he has a defect so that he will not profane my holy uh, place because I am Yahweh who makes him holy. Moses said these things to Aaron and his sons and all the people of Israel. Yahweh said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to separate themselves from the holy things of the people of Israel, which they set apart as holy for me, so that they will not profane my holy name. I am Yahweh. Tell them any descendant of yours through all your generation who have approaches the holy things that the people of Israel consecrate to Yahweh and is in clean, unclean will be cut off from before me, I am Yahweh. Any descendant of Aaron with Sorat is or a discharge is not to eat the holy things until he is clean. Anyone who has touched the person who made unclean by a dead body or who has a seminal emission or who has touched a reptile, an insect that can make him unclean, or a man who is unclean for any reason who can transmit to him his uncleanness. The person who touches any of these things will be unclean until evening and is not to eat the holy things unless he bathes his body in water. I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about this, uh, uh, things about the things that make men unclean is a seminal dis emission. If he's having uh, pressure in that zone of his body, then he has an emission. He had no willful act involved in that. It is still considered a sin. And so he is to immerse himself in water, and then in that evening he will be uh, uh, clean. He's not clean until he washes in water, and then uh, that evening he will become clean. Um, that's why there are so many ritual baths found at the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, they've found that there are temple uh, ritual baths all over the uh, site there at uh, Jerusalem. And uh, they've got baths that are huge. It looks like they could probably process thousands of people at one time so that they can undergo the ritual bath and be clean that evening for the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles or whatever it might be that they're starting to celebrate. Um, it says he is not to eat any things, any holy things, unless he bathes his body in water. So what then was the uh, temple site? What is it? Well, it's a kosher restaurant. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. God didn't want us offering offerings just anywhere. 
because then we can do it whatever way pleases us instead of searching out the way that pleases him. So he's going to have them become clean at evening, so what's the best place to do it? Well, where there's a lot of mikvahs, uh, uh, ritual baths. Uh, that would be a good place to have this kosher restaurant because he can't approach any of the holy things until he has bathed him, his body and uh, undergone the cleansing. Um, the Kohen must observe this charge of mine, otherwise they profane it, and they will bear the consequences of their sin for doing so and die in it. I am Yahweh who makes them holy. Uh, no one who is not a Kohen may eat anything holy or may a tenant of or, or a employee of a Kohen eat anything holy. But if a Kohen acquires a slave, either through purchase or through being born in his household, he may share his food. If the daughter of a Kohen is married to a man who is not a Kohen, she is not to have a share of the food set aside from the holy things. But if the daughter of a Kohen is a widow or divorcee and has no children, she is sent back to her father's house as when she was young. She may share in her father's food, but no, no one that is a Kohen, that is not a Kohen, is to share in it. So the food of the Kohens are shared, are specifically for the use of the Kohens. If a person eats holy food by mistake, he must add one-fifth to it and give holy food, the holy food to the Kohen. They are not to profane the holy things of the people of Israel that they have set apart for Yahweh and thus cause them to bear the guilt, require a guilt offering by eating their holy things because I am Yahweh who makes them holy. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to enter to the entire people of Israel and tell them when anyone, whether a member of the house of Israel or a foreigner living in Israel, brings his offering, either in connection with a vow or as a volunteer offering, and brings it to Yahweh as a burnt offering in order for you to be accepted, you must bring a ma male without defect from the cattle, the sheep, or the goats. You are not to bring anything with a defect because it will not be acceptable from you. Whoever brings a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh in fulfillment of a vow or has a, a sacrificial peace offering, wait a minute, a voluntary offering, whether it come from the herd or from the flock, it must be unblemished and without defect in order to be accepted. If it is blind, injured, mutilated, or has an abnormal growth on its uh, or has a festering or running sores. You're not to offer it to Yahweh or to make such an offering by fire on the altar to Yahweh. If a bull or a lamb has a limb which is too long or too short, you may offer it as a voluntary offering, but uh, for a vow it will not be accepted. An animal with bruised, crushed, or torn, cut genitals, you are not to offer it to Yahweh. You are not to do these things in your land, and you are not to receive any of these from a foreigner for you to offer as uh, bread for your God because the deformity is the defect in them, and they will not be accepted from you. Yahweh said to Moses, when a bull or a sheep or a goat is born, if it is to stay with, it is to stay with its mother for seven days, but on the eighth day, it may be accepted for an offering made by fire to Yahweh. However, no animal is to be slaughtered together with its young on the same day, neither cow or you. When you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to Yahweh, you must do it in such a way that you will be accepted. It must be eaten on the same day as it is offered. Leave none of it until morning. I am Yahweh. You are to keep my mitzvot and obey them. I am Yahweh. You are to not to profane my holy name. In the contrary, I am to be regarded as holy among the people of Israel. I am Yahweh who makes you holy, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahweh. Amen. <coughs> chapter 23. This is an important chapter. 
He's going to rehearse for us the appointments of God and then talk some further about it. Yeah. Yahweh said to Moses, tell the people of Israel the designated times of Yahweh, and that would be the Moedim of Yahweh, which you are to proclaim as holy convocations are my designated times. Work is to be done on six days, but the seventh day is Shabbat, a complete rest, a holy convocation. You are not to do any kind of work on it. It is a Shabbat for Yahweh, even in your homes. These are the designated times of Yahweh, the holy convocations you are to proclaim at their designated times. Now, holy convocations are commanded assemblies. They're not suggestions. They're commandments. So anytime that there is a holy convocation proclaimed, you are to assemble with the believers, the other community. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, this is the first day of the sacred year, between sundown and complete darkness, and that's really uh, not the way it's read in the Hebrew. It's between sundown and sundown. There are two sundowns for a day, the beginning sundown and the ending sundown. And uh, between sundown and the second sundown comes Pesach for Yahweh. On the 15th day of the same month is the festival of matzah. For seven days you are to eat matzah. On the first day you are to have a holy convocation. Don't do any kind of ordinary work. Bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Ordinary work is work that you would do any day of the week. And... Uh, those that are not ordinary days are the ones that are, are reserved only for Shabbat. On the first day, you're to have a holy convocation. You're having a holy sem assembly together where you will observe this holy day together as, a, as one people. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. Bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh for seven days. On the seventh day, is a holy convocation. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. Yahweh said to Moses, tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land I'm giving you and harvest its right crops, you are to bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen. He is to wave the sheaf before Yahweh so that you will ex be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after Shabbat, on the day that you wave the sheaf. You are to offer... A male lamb without defect in the first year as a burnt offering to Yahweh. Its grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with olive oil, an offering made by fire to Yahweh as a fragrant aroma. Its drink offering is to be of, um, of wine, Its grain offering is to be one gallon of five flour mixed with olive oil, an offering made by fire to Yahweh as a fragrant aroma. Its drink offering is to be a... Uh, <laughs> my brain skipped the loop here. Uh, it's to be wine, one quart, a quart of, of wine. You are not to eat the bread. I want to look at this real quick because there are several Hebrew words for wine. Yain is the, is the fermented kind of wine. It has been allowed to ferment. And that's uh, Yud, Patak, and Yud, Hirik, and then Anun Safit. And so that would be pronounced Yain. Yain. And the drink offering is. Uh, is to be fermented wine, a fourth part of a hen. Now they say that that's a quart of wine, 
And then, <clears throat> a grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with olive oil, an offering made by fire Yahweh to Yahweh as a fragrant aroma. The drink offering is to be of wine, one part. That's the yain. And you are not to eat bread, uh, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering of the first fruits for your God. This is a permanent regulation throughout all your generations, no matter where you live. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day that you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks until the day after the seventh week. You are to count 50 days, and then you are to present it with a new green offering. Now, what this actually says in the Hebrew is that you shall, from the day following uh, the, the Sabbath, which would be the weekly Sabbath during the Feast of Matzah, then uh, from the day you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks. Now, that's not what it says. It says you shall count seven Sabbaths. Regular weekly Sabbaths. So you have to count 50 Sabbaths, and then you are to present a new grain offering on the day following it. After the seventh Sabbath, you are to count 50 days, and then you will present the new grain offering to Yahweh. You must bring the bread from your home for waving. Two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour baked with leaven as first fruits for Yahweh among, along the bread presented with seven lambs without defect, one year old, one bull with two rams, and these will be burnt offerings for Yahweh with their grain and drink offerings, an offering made by fire as a fragrant aroma for Yahweh. Offer one male goat as a sin offering and two male lambs with uh, one year old as a sacrifice of peace offerings. The Kohen will weigh them with the bread of the uh, peace offering. And the coin will wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before Yahweh. With the two lambs, these will be holy for Yahweh for the Kohen. On the same day, you are to call a holy convocation. There's another holy conv convocation assembly. Do not do any kind of work, and this is a permanent regulation throughout your generation, no matter where you live. When the harvest, the, when you harvest the right crops in your land, don't harvest all the way to the corners of the field. Don't gather the ears of grain left by the harvesters. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner, for I am Yahweh your God. Yahweh our God is a, a generous God. And Yahweh said to Moses, tell the people of Israel in the seventh month, the first month is to be for you a day of complete rest for remembering a holy convocation announced with uh, blasts on the shofar. Do not do any kind of ordinary work and bring an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Yahweh said to Moshe, the tenth day of the seventh month is Yom Kippur. You're to have a holy convocation that's a commanded assembly. You are to deny yourselves, and you are to bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. You are not to do any kind of work on that day because it is Yom Kippur, a day of covering, to make atonement for you before Yahweh your God. Anyone who does not deny himself on that day to be, is to be cut off from his people, and anyone who does any kind of work on that day, I will destroy from among his people. You are not to do any kind of work. It is a permanent regulation throughout your generations, no matter where you live. It will be for you a Shabbat of complete rest. Shabbat Shabbaton. And you are to not deny yourselves. You are to rest on your Shabbat from evening of the ninth day to the, of the month until the following uh, evening. That's between the evenings. Yahweh said to Moses, tell the people of Israel, on the 15th day of the seventh month is the feast of 
Sukkot for seven days to Yahweh. On the first day is to be a complete, a holy convocation, complete assembly, commanded assembly. And do not do any kind of work. For seven days you are to bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. On the eighth day you are to have a holy convocation and bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a day of public assembly. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. These are the designated times of Yahweh that you are to proclaim as holy convocations and bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering, a grain offering, a sacrifice, uh, and drink offerings, each on its own day. Besides the Sabbaths of Yahweh for your gifts, all your vows, all your voluntary offerings that you give to Yahweh, but on the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered the produce of the land, you are to observe the festival of Yahweh seven days. That's the Feast of Sukkot. The first day is to be a complete day of rest. Eighth day is to be a complete day of rest. So there's two holy days within the Feast of Sukkot. On the first day, you are to take choice fruit, fruit palm fronds, thick branches, and river willows, and celebrate the presence of Yahweh, your God, for seven days. You are to observe it as a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year. It is a permanent regulation, generation to generation. Keep it in the seventh month. You are to live in Sukkot for seven days. That's temporary dwellings. And using the four species that are named in the feast instructions for the Feast of Sukkot, you're to build your sukkahs with those uh, branches from those four species so that the generation after generation of you will know that I made the people of Israel live in Sukkot, temporary dwellings, when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. Thus Moses announced to the people of Israel the Moedim, the, the designated times of Yahweh. I'm getting pretty dry. I think I want to probably call that a wrap for the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we'll call that the end of the parsha. Oh, I'm <laughs> sitting too low. <laughs> Looks like my head's an invis on an invisible body. <laughs> I'm on an invisible body here, and from my about my mouth down has disappeared on its side, <laughs> something like that. <sighs> Let me move this out of the way for you. What was that guy, the talking head they had years back on the, huh? I don't know. Somebody said it. Oh, somebody laughed. Was that you, Shane? Shane laughed. Oh, I know, but I can't remember his name. Yeah. Talking about the kids. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, it was on the, ah, I forget what that was. Anyway, <laughs> it was unimportant. Pretty stupid thing myself. so important that we that we see in this Torah reading that not only the Kohanim have a responsibility but even the people to be uh, distinguished among all people <coughs> yes and uh, such a blessing it is and an honor uh, and yet humbling before Yahweh to uh, be a part of his kingdom because uh, we strive to always uh, learning his in doing his ways <coughs> with faithfulness and uh, a willing heart and to trust him all the way to seeking, seeking his will. 
And if you are a Christian believer, mm -hmm. that doesn't excuse you from keeping the commands of Torah. That's right. And you need to learn what those instructions are and keep them. And that's why we read the Torah so uh, so much, because mm -hmm. everybody needs to know the instructions of the Torah. That's right. That's right. And if God convicts you during the time we're reading it, then ask God to forgive you for breaking it and get on with the program. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And remember, uh, re as we were reading in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, speaks of of this profoundly, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, <coughs> that was one congregation put it uh yep. that we are christians but we still must recognize god's word hmm. and god's word is the torah mm -hmm. so we'll uh, continue teaching that as long as we've got somebody that'll listen hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> baruch atadonai eloheinu oh. Oh, oh 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 getting the hor horse before the cart <laughs> or after the cart, something like something that. Something like that. All right, ironic benediction, please. Yevarecha kadon avish marecha. Amen. Yair adonai penavilecha vechunecha. Amen. Yisah adonai penavilecha vayaseim lecha. Shalom. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you shalom. Give Amen. you peace. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pri Hagafen Amen Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has created the fruit of the yayin, <laughs> the, <laughs> the wine. <laughs> Amen. Baruch Hashem. I'll have to get that word plugged into my head a little better, which is the uh, the new wine that doesn't hasn't been fermented yet. Oh. I'll mm -hmm. get that plugged in, and then I'll be able to tell you what it is next time. All right. Barukatalanai Elohim Alkalam Ashir Kichanu B'Mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Mitalat Yadaim. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments. Command us concerning the washing of our hands. Amen. Baruch Atanai Eloheinu Malkolam Hamotzi Lechem in Haaretz Amen Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who brings, brings forth, forth bread, bread from, from the, the earth. earth. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a good Shabbat. Absolutely. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank all of you for coming and watching. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are giving faithful support, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> 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 and may God restore it, bounce it back upon you a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Amen. And please look forward to uh, our weekly Torah studies, which occur Tuesday night at 7 p.m. 
here on the air. And, I mean, excuse me. Well, you being here or on the air. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and um, uh, read uh, the next Torah reading, which I believe is called Behar. And you'll, you can find it on our website at tzon.org. Click on the Torah schedules and, and you follow along with us. And uh, remember tonight's Pesach Sheni for the second Passover. So Amen. Yeah. Um, all and right. if somebody out there wants to have a second opportunity to keep the Passover oh, because yeah. they didn't get to come the first time. You'd like to know how to do it, yeah. Let us know. We yes. can arrange to put on the uh, Seder for the second occurrence of it. Yeah, absolutely. But you're going to have to call me quickly, yep. <laughs> like now. <laughs> like 512-452-8700. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. I guess uh, that's it, huh? That's it. Let's, let's All right. Sing shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. La Hitrayot, La Hitrayot, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, my friend, Shalom, my friend, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Shalom, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom Hey Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom We'll see you again. Amen. Hallelujah.